Hi everyone, we'll start with a broadcast section with no embargo, followed by an embargoed section for 10.30pm tonight. No live tweeting during the broadcast section, please, and use the microphone provided. James. Afternoon, Ange. Um, could you give us your reaction, first of all, to the news of Eric Ten Hag leaving Manchester United yesterday? Were you shocked when you heard it? Uh, nah, not really shocked, I guess. Uh, uh, disappointing as it was, almost uh, inevitable with uh, you know the scrutiny it had. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, the nature of uh, the nature of football these days. Can you give us a little bit of an insight into the scrutiny that a, a Premier League manager faces on a day-to-day -day basis? And I imagine, obviously, a club like United it intensifies more and more. But obviously, you're at Spurs. But just give your opinion on that. Look, I've said in the past that. Um, it's becoming more and more difficult, I guess, to to uh, you know do the role in in kind of any sort of um, processed way. Um, yeah, like I said, it's just the nature of, of what we do these days. That uh, it seems like um, you know, if you look at Eric, he's there for two and a bit years. In those two years, he won uh, you know a trophy in each year. I think they finished third the first year. I don't know if he was here with that record, would he have lost his job? I don't know. Would he be under the same scrutiny? I don't know. Because um, everyone tells me all I have to do is win a trophy. Um, but I've got a feeling it would be the same because I think, you know, people want to, you know, I think just the nature of the world today, you, you've got to, as a manager, you've got to hit a sweet spot where you have success, you play football everyone likes, you get every signing right. And in that moment, you seem to get some sort of validation. Anything other than that, it seems to be, you know, for some clubs, they win trophies, but they want football. Others want football, but then changes, they want trophies. So it is, it is a difficult task. And uh, But what, what I think what you've seen in the past, you know, I'm sure Eric will bounce back from it because he's a... You know, he's a good manager, he's a top manager and, uh, you know, you've seen it with other managers and, you know, I'm sure his, his career will continue to go on strongly. You raise a good point there. There's a lot of variables, you know, involved in, in a job as a manager or a head coach, as, as they're called these days, you know. Do you think that sometimes there is too much onus on head coaches and managers in terms of all those things that you were talking about? Well, I mean, we're... No, I don't think it's too much. It's just that we're, we're obviously the public face of it and you have to... You know, when you are, you, you have to take that responsibility. It's just, like I said, it's just, you know, I think you need to kind of have a clear idea, I guess, if you are in this position, as we are as managers, of what we're trying to achieve. Because, you know, we're the ones inevitably have to answer these questions. So, you know, about progress and where we're at and what we're, aims and ambitions are. So, you know, I guess it's, it's easier when that's aligned you know, with the overall objective of the club. But if that keeps shifting, then it becomes really difficult to, to kind of figure out, um, you know, what, what, you, what the outcomes are supposed to be. What we do know is that any process that, you know, you want an outcome of continued sort of opportunity for success, because that's the only thing you can kind of try and achieve. You can't guarantee success. There's no such thing. It doesn't matter who you are. But what you try and achieve as a club, I think, is the opportunity for success on a regular basis. That process takes time. And just focusing now on the short term, you um, obviously will be hoping for a reaction after the Palace result over the weekend. Have you seen a bit of a reaction on the training ground the last day or so? No, I don't think it's about a reaction. I think you know, it, it's you know, it's 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 fairly sort of understandable that the players and everyone was disappointed with. You know, with with the way um, things went for us at Palace, uh, both performance and obviously outcome. Um, but we've got to get away from this kind of, you know, reactions and you know, trying to atone for something. You know, you've got a f sort of part of the process for us is just making sure that every game we 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 kind of stick to our principles, irrespective of what's happened in the past. You know, because if if you wait for reactions for for good performances, then you're actually you know, anticipating another challenge where you should be just trying to focus on consistency in performance, consistency in, in you know, mentality of how we approach every game.
Hi, I'm Charlie. Good man. Um, just going back to Ten Hag and, and the whole thing about managers, does job security ever worry you when you're in a job, or is it when you're in a job you just want to do your job, play good football, win, win trophies? Look, I've... Uh, yeah, it's easy to say, but I've never worried about job security. I think if you do, then you're probably... Um, you know, going to end up not doing the role, you know, the justice it deserves for yourself more than anything else because the reality is there is no job security. I don't know what job security looks like. You know, what's the average tenure of a, a manager these days? So if you, if you think, you know, I'm going to be around for five years, that's highly unlikely. So, you know, if you worry about those things, then I think you end up... Um, like I said, chasing your tail a little bit, trying to and probably making decisions um, for the wrong reasons. Um, I've always, as I said before, I, I understand I won't be here forever, but I, I work as if I will be and I make decisions that I think will get us to being a successful football club. And, uh, um, you know, if you, if you deviate from that, then the inevitability is that the end will probably come sooner than um, you want because... I said job security for managers just doesn't exist because there is always something that, you know, unless you win it and you win it in the right style with the right decisions, um, everyone else seems that will be under scrutiny. So you've got to understand that's part of the role. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I think criticism and scrutiny is healthy. Um, even criticism and scrutiny that's not valid is 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 useful because that's what tests your resolve in doing what you do. Because if you're just going to jump at the first time somebody questions what you're doing, it probably means you don't believe in it. You're playing against someone tomorrow who's been at his club for nine years, going on ten. Um, do you ever believe that you'll ever be at either Spurs or your next club for that length of time? Like I said, that's how I kind of, you know, plan things because I, I want you know whatever we achieve to be sustainable so you make decisions on on that basis so that um, if things keep going in the right direction then I, I don't know how long I'll be wherever I've been you know usually I've left after a kind of successful period but as I said before you, you know the successful periods of the clubs I've been at have outlasted me so I think that's important um, not that I'm kind of the, the key in that, but it's just that that's what you try and build. So, you know, how long I stay at one club is always kind of being defined by, you know, kind of, is there still an alignment? Is there still a challenge there? And, you know, um, that's what I kind of focus on. And finally, from me, Pep suggested that he would maybe rest players or, or, or rotate players, those that weren't 100% wouldn't be risked. Do you care who's in the shirt opposite you or do you just look at the shirts and think, we want to beat this team? Yeah, no, look, I think... Look, I, you know, I think it's fair to say that you know, most clubs rotate through the Carabao Cup, but you just have to look at Man City's record in this competition and, you know, you look at Man City's record in any competition, you know, they're, they're a fantastic football club and they've had success for a very long time. And I think sometimes... You know, people take that for granted. They just say, "Oh, it's City," but it's very, very difficult in this league and these, you know, in this country to ma maintain that kind of excellence over the time they have, and they they do that because, irrespective of who plays, um, there's a level of performance they continually deliver, whether that's you know they've rotated the team or not. Whatever the competition, very, very few competitions they drop out at an early stage. I actually. Uh, can you give us team news? Is Sonny fit? Yeah. Uh, Sonny, n no. Well, he, he's he's almost fit, but we're, we're, we're probably, you know, from our perspective, we'll, um, we'll aim him for the weekend. We're, we're quite confident he'll be right for the weekend. Um, the only one that's missing out, that's a bit of a disappointment, is Wilson. He had a, he's had a, a setback um, after, uh, you know, during the week. Um, and it seems like it's it's a serious one, so we're just waiting for more information. So that's the only one that's disappointing. Um, and then from the weekend, everyone else is okay. Jed's back training. Is it the, the same injury then? Yeah, yeah. Well, not exactly the same, but yeah, the same area. Um, you, you've had two games in this competition. You made nine changes at Fulham um, last time out, and, and 
eight at Coventry this year. Um, is, is that likely to be your approach in this competition going forward, or do you pick on a game by game basis? No, I think we, you know, similarly to what we've done in all our sort of midweek games, Europe included, is try and pick a team we think will win the game and, and take into account that, you know, we did play Sunday. Um, you know, obviously City played on Saturday, so, um, you know, we've got to we've got to sort of make sure that our players, the ones we put out there tomorrow, are able to compete physically with uh, with what's uh, going to be across the other side of the pitch for us. So, um so, you know, I'll select the team as I have, like I said, recently. The good thing for us is that just about the whole squad's had regular football or some kind of football. So, um, you know, that means that you know, whatever changes we make tonight, the players coming in are at a good physical level. Thanks. Rob, please. Hi, Anderson. Uh, just ask you about Dane Kulaseski. He said this season he's seen uh, a growth in his maturity on, on and off the pitch. How much of a change and growth have you seen in terms of his leadership qualities over the past 16 months since you've been at the club? Yeah, look, I think, yeah, I think Decky's growing, but I think that's kind of where we are as a group. I think a lot of them are, are kind of growing and they're growing through experiences. And I think even for Decky, the weekend was another sort of growth period because I think, you know, he, he obviously got hurt pretty early and wasn't happy with it. And I think, in many respects, he lost a bit of his composure after that, and uh, that's another growth for him, you know, to understand. And that's part of it as well. You know, you can still you need to focus your energies on on helping the team on the day rather than sort of being personally aggrieved. But that's where we are as a group, and I think that's where we get our growth by going through experiences like we did on the weekend with a lot of the players, and them going through that and understanding how to deal with it better next time. But um, Look, Deggy's been fantastic for us this year in terms of, you know, both his output but also his his attitude, his mentality, and uh, you know, I think there's more to come. Um, uh, Jay, please. Hi, um, just one for me. I think there's been a rising trend this season of teams coming from behind in Premier League games to win. Um, saw it with Brentford at the weekend. I um, just wanted to know if you thought there was a particular reason behind that. No, not really, mate. I think. Um, I've never gone for trends in football that last a couple of months. Trends in football last a lot longer than that. I think, um, you know, um, it's the nature of a little bit of the Premier League, I think, that, um, you know, most teams tend not to sit on, on the kind of results. You know, there seems to be, in the Premier League, a, a propensity for teams to keep, you know, playing right until the end in terms of um, getting a result and you know you see quick turnarounds within that so but yeah I mean I don't I'll, I think a trend in football needs to last longer than uh, a couple of months okay we'll finish with George please hi and um, Richarlison's obviously fit again now do you sort of see him as an option going to this game on the left or is you seeing him more as a centre forward with Dom and, and they sort of competing? No, I think um, Richie obviously played a lot of his football on the left. He's definitely an option there for us. Um, yeah, he's an option through the middle as well. So, um, yeah, look, again, he's getting, you know, some good match minutes now. So hopefully, you know, with the next couple of weeks, we've still got um, a good game schedule where... Um, you know, like I said, he's only just getting his season started. So the more we can expose him uh, without sort of overburdening him in his early stages, I think we'll, um, you know, he'll be able to contribute even more. And the Man City game last season at home sort of got overshadowed, but you went with Pape Sarr as kind of like the full stein. Was that just kind of because you was without Richie, I think, at the time in injury? Or was that more to kind of counter what, what City do? Oh, I don't think we had a striker available, mate, if I remember correctly. So, um, yeah, Pape won't be a false nine tomorrow, mate. Is that something, though, potentially, like, throughout the season you could... Oh, look, I think with the way we play, um, you know, whether it's Dom or it's Richie or, you know, we've played Sonny through there, we, we, we kind of try to play with sort of our fixed position there. and <coughs> But it depends on the opposition and what they do. And, um, you know, obviously City will, will pose some, some different challenges this week uh, than we had in sort of the last game. So um, within that context, it's just about adjusting sort of some of our play for that. And obviously I know you want to win every game, but I think some fans would probably look at this seven-day week and some of them would see this Man City game, even though it's the fourth round of the Carabao Cup, as the biggest one of, of the week. Do you get any kind of sense from staff, players, that no one 
or any of them don't realise the significance of, of this fixture on tomorrow night? Look, I, I, I've said on countless occasions, I'm not a supporter of the club. I'm the manager of this football club. And I'd hate to think that any supporter of this football club thinks that I try harder in one game more than another. Different, I, I, supporters can feel what they like, which is the most important game. But it would be the biggest injustice for me as a manager if I said to them, you know what, we're going to try harder tomorrow than we will on the weekend or that we did last weekend. It just, it doesn't work that way. You know, you need to separate you know, supporters of a football club with people who have the responsibility of representing it. Our responsibility lies in trying to be the best we can be every day um, for our supporters, for everyone who, who's part of this football club. It's not about, you know, um, again, trying to, you know, um, gain brownie points. You know, that's not what our role is. OK, we'll end the broadcast section there, move on to the embargoed section at 10.30pm tonight. Gary? Oh,